Hi, this is Sudeep and I welcome you back to this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with StatPro. In the past couple of sessions, we have been discussing the problem of a statically determined beam, which is pinned at one end and having an inclined roller support on the other. And we have seen how to calculate the reactions manually using the equations of equilibrium and I also have done the actual modeling of the system in Stat Pro. So to understand this session, it's absolutely important that you see all of those sessions. But before we go forward today, please do take a moment to hit the subscribe button if you are new to this channel. And if you had been around with us for some time, please do take a moment to hit the like button if you had been deriving value out of this channel. So this is the problem that we had been discussing. And this problem has been taken from the famous book, Elementary Structure Analysis by Norris Wilbur and Otko. We have seen that in order to model the system in Start Pro, especially when we have to model the inclined roller support, we have to set up an inclined axis system with the help of a reference point, which is denoted here in this picture in red. And based on that reference point, we establish the X and Y axis of the inclined axis system. Now, based on the axis system that we have defined, we know that the roller support needs to be defined as a fixed but FY MZ support. For knowing more about the details of setting up an inclined axis system to define an inclined support, please do refer to the session where we have discussed this in details, the link of which is appearing on the top right of your screen right now. Now, in our last session, we have defined the structure using five nodes where node number one had the pin support and node number five had the inclined roller support. In order to see the details of the modeling, please do refer to the last session by clicking on the link that is appearing on the top right of your screen right now. Now, in order to locate the reference point from node number five, where we would specify the inclined roller support, we would need to move three feet along the positive direction of the global x-axis, and thus we have specified the x value of the relative distance as positive 36 inches, which is equivalent to positive three feet. And then we also see that we have to move four feet in the negative direction of the global y-axis to finally locate the reference point, And thus we have specified y as minus 48 inches, which is equivalent to minus four feet. We have also specified the releases in the FY and MZ direction because we remember based on the axis system that we have defined, we would need to define the support as fixed but FYMZ. The equivalent command line of this definition would be found in the text editor as what is shown on the screen right now. So here you'd see that the command line is given as five, which would mean the node number where the inclined roller support is defined. INC indicates the inclined nature of the support that would be defined. 36 minus 48 and zero defines the relative distance from node number five to the reference point, which actually establishes the inclined axis system. And then we define the support type as fixed but FYMZ with reference to the inclined axis system. So this is the model that we had created last time and we had defined all our loads in a single load case. And we can press Shift B to display the, the load values. And then once we have done this, we would need to run the analysis. Our intention today with this model is to go into the post-processing mode. So we go into the post-processing mode. And what then we will do is we will compare the reaction results that is calculated here with and compare that with 
the manual calculation that we did for the reactions and see if they match. But as you remember, the first thing that you would need to do is to ensure that the equilibrium check has been satisfied. So we go to the reactions table and we see that the values here uh, are the applied loads and the reaction loads are equal and opposite. So that's what we had wanted. And then we would need to go back to the displacement option and check in summary the overall displacement values. The highest displacement comes to be uh, 0 0.029 inches, which is well within the tolerable limits. And this would prove that the linear elastic analysis is valid. So now let us go and calculate or rather see the value of the reactions that has been reported by STAD. So we go to this reactions option and expand this table to see the values of the reactions. Now let us take this reaction and let us draw the reaction values or the reaction vectors on the free body diagram of the structural system. So now we have the diagram of the structure with all its applied loads on the top of the screen. The restrained information has not been indicated here as we intend to draw the reactions that are provided by the restraints on the structure so that we could complete the free body diagram. The reaction information that is reported by STAD is being indicated at the bottom and both of these are being referred with respect to the global access system which is indicated at the bottom left of the screen. Now we can see that for node number one the FX reaction is indicated as 47.5 kips. That would mean that the horizontal reaction at node number one is 47.5 kips. The FY reaction for node number one is 36.667 kips which would mean that the vertical reaction at node number one would be 36.67 kips. Again, the FX reaction for node number five is given as minus 17.5 kips. That is the horizontal reaction at node number five would be 17.5 kips and it would be in the direction of the global x-axis such that it is indicated from right to left or in the negative direction of the global x-axis. The vertical reaction for the node number 5 is 23.33 kips. That, that is, the vertical reaction at node number 5 would be 23.33 kips. So this is the free body diagram of the structure as shown on the top. Now let us compare this result with the calculation that we did manually. Now let us compare the results that we have obtained from Start Pro with our manual calculations and thus we can see that the reactions obtained in both the structures, in both uh, what we have got from Start Pro and what we have got from our manual calculation using the equations of equilibrium are exactly the same. Well, yes, um, in the only difference here is that we have considered the nodes 1 and 5 to be supported uh, in STAT Pro. And when we did a manual calculation, we considered node 1 and 2 to be supported. But the, those are co just cosmetic differences. But if you look at the reaction results in both the cases, it is exactly the same. Now, so far, we had been obtaining the reaction results on the post-processing mode, but there is also a way that we could get the results the reaction results from the output file of STAT Pro. For that, we would need to add the relevant command in the STAT Pro text editor. Let us see how we can do that. So if we go into the text editor, after perform analysis command, let us add the line print support reaction or. This would mean that we are asking Start Pro to print the support reaction results for all the nodes 
that have support. Now, with this command, let us go out of the text editor and let us rerun the analysis again. Control F5 is what I have used to run the analysis, which is a shortcut to run the analysis. Now, if I go to the output file, uh, we'll just say view output file and click on the done button. We'll double click on the support reaction and we can see that the support reaction has been printed in the output file. It is exactly the same values that has been reported in the post-processing mode. Now, we know that for a roller support, there is only one single reaction which would be acting normal to the roller support, which is indicated by the reaction R2 here. But we have sort of, because STAD reports it in the global access system, we had broken that R2 into its own components along the global X and the global Y axis, and we have reported the reactions uh, as part the global X and global Y axis. But what about the reaction R2? If we want to find out what is the reaction R2, how do we find that? Well, by manual calculation, it's simple. All that we need to do is we have to do an SRSS combination of both the horizontal and the vertical reaction, and we get the reaction R2 as 29.16 kips. Manually, that is settled. But how do we get STAD to report this inclined reaction or the reaction of the inclined support? Let us find out. So to report the inclined support reaction, as we have just seen in STAD Pro, we would need to get the output only in the output file. That is not obtainable from the post-processing mode. So we have to add this in the command line. So there is a specific way by which we can ask Stat Pro to report the reaction of an inclined support. So what we do is we put in the command set inclined reaction and then we'll say print support reaction and in this case we only have one inclined support because the other support is not inclined it is providing restraints in the global um, access system so we will say that we want to print the support reaction only for node number five so we'll add list five and now set inclined reaction would make that to understand that I will be asked to print the support reaction of an inclined support and then I have said list number five. So let us say come out of the text editor now after giving this command and let us run the analysis once again. Go to the post processing mode. Sorry, not the post processing mode, but we want to go into the output file. So let us go into the output file. And now we can see that apart from support reaction all, there has there is another report which says support reaction list five. And since this is set to the inclined, <clears throat> it's asked to report the inclined reaction. It has reported the inclined reaction in the X direction as minus 29.17. Now this X, Y, Z are nothing but the inclined axis system. So based on the inclined axis system, our reaction is reported to be minus 29.17 kips. Now, if you watch this figure once again, where the reaction R2 is shown against the inclined axis system, it would be clear as to why R2 is reported as a negative value in the X direction, because it is acting in the opposite direction of the inclined x-axis. If you have enjoyed the session today, please do hit the like button and please do join me in the next session, which would be next week. Till then, bye-bye.